ayahuasca. I preach in the name of King Jesus. <laughs> It's, a, it's an opportunity to, take an, to, to talk to people about the Lord and to laugh at yourself when you say things wrong and, uh, and understand that uh, God loves you and the people are gracious and we are very, very honored to have the chance to be here. Vicki and I have been Kansas missionaries to Africa since we were appointed in, oh my, November of 90. And uh, we were pastoring down here at Grace Assembly of God in Coffeeville at the time. And my mom and dad pastored down here in Humboldt, so uh, we're very comfortable here. This is our home, our home district, and we're delighted to represent you in Africa. Slide, please. Uh, you see, my dear sweet wife, as Pastor mentioned, at the, while we're in the States, whoop, sorry, hold that thought. Uh, <laughs> while we're in the States right now, my, uh, my mother-in-law is staying with us. She's 89. And uh, she's a gracious, gracious lady. I don't even tell very many mother, mother-in-law jokes. But she's a good lady. I'm very blessed. Uh, but she wasn't feeling so good, and Vicki felt like she needed to stay with her mom. So she sends her greetings. And, uh, and so anyway, we were delighted. Uh, we're going to show you a video. There's just to give you a little example of what, uh, what's going on. If you've got that video, brother, we'll just kind of give you an example of what we're doing in Africa. In the West African villages of Ghana, life can be difficult. Extreme poverty is common, and a lack of clean water brings sickness and often death. Many people have to walk several kilometers in search of any water. And this water most often than not gives diseases. We have a big challenge in the community, and that has to do with uh, our source of uh, drinking water. It exposes the community to all kinds of diseases. Some even die as a result of this disease. People across Africa, if they do have water, it is most often filthy, disease-filled water. The number one killer in the world today are diseases and sickness carried by unsafe and unclean water. <laughs> Through a partnership between the Ghana Assemblies of God and the Africa Oasis Project, the church is bringing living water to the people of Ghana. The Africa Oasis Project is the Assemblies of God World Missions Outreach in Africa with water solutions. That is where we use wells to bring the message of Jesus Christ to remote places where people desperately need water. As a church, we felt that it was important to attend to the physical needs of the people. We believe that water is life. So if you're able to provide portable drinking water for the community, it will help them live healthy lives. And in that, when you present the gospel to them, they are ready to hear. And by so doing, many people are giving their lives to Christ. In many Muslim villages across Ghana, Men and women are hearing the message of Jesus for the first time because the church is providing clean drinking water to the community. The provision of this uh, well has been the source of uh, witnessing to the community about the love of Christ, which as a result has brought many people into the church. From a man back in Kenya, the water has really done us good. We are very grateful for the water. Uh, we used to have some skin diseases, but nowadays, and when you visit our clinics, you don't experience those diseases again. We are so grateful for that. We are so delighted to see that the Africa Oasis Wells are placed close to the church. And we rejoice with every soul that comes to the water and has opportunity also to hear of the water of life and hear about Jesus Christ. So many stories we have of people coming into the kingdom of God because of ministry at the well. part of your family. Our picture and our, and actually our daughter's picture is also on your board back there of missionaries that you support. And we, oh, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for what you do for missions. It's, it's delightful to see out in the hall the different missionaries on your board that you care about. You know, there's an old missionary saying that says, the light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. Yeah. You show me a church with a burden for the world, I'll show you a church with a burden for their community. 
It's a, and we're honored to be a part of it. And so we thank you for all that you have done over the years. Um, I do have a table in the back there with uh, prayer cards and, that we can, and, and brochures and other material. I encourage you to stop and pick those up. We believe in the prayers of God's people. Uh, you know, these cards are not just... Uh, we didn't print 7,000 of these so you could have pictures of Mark and Vicki. Uh, it, we want to encourage you to pray. Just to remember to pray. One lady told us she puts them around the bathroom mirror. So every morning she prays for all the missionaries. And, but it's to remind you to pray. Would God put somebody in your heart, not just the missionary, but your pastor and his family or your family or your people at work. God will touch your heart. Just You think of somebody. I, 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 I messaged somebody the other day that I haven't talked to in years. And I said, you know what? You're just on my heart today. Just want to let you know. I'm praying for you. Now, sometimes God will ask you to stop kneel, pray, but sometimes he just wants you to whisper a prayer, so whatever, a prayer, so whatever it takes, uh, we encourage you to pray. My wife and I went through an experience several years ago where we were hijacked at gunpoint in Johannesburg, South Africa, and you know, they had the gun, so they got the vehicle. Uh, that young man pointed a gun at me, and, and, and yeah, I didn't argue. You know, a gun is a key that opens all doors, and this young kid, he was young, he was probably 16, 18, his hand was shaking, he was I was, he was nervous, I was nervous, and, and in perfect English, he said, get out, get out. <laughs> so I got out. And one of the men walked up, Vicki, being a good wife, she had gotten out to open the gate so we could pull into our house. We have gates and walls and alarms and, you know, all that stuff. Well, this guy grabbed hold of Vicki. Of course, he didn't really realize who he grabbed. She could have taken him, but she, <laughs> but she saw the gun on me, so... Anyway, the point being, they drove away with our vehicle, but they didn't shoot us. Uh, two hours later, in our same neighborhood, uh, a man and his teenage son were hijacked and shot and killed. And a tragedy, and we were so thankful that God spared our lives. But you know, we, we got back to the United States a few weeks later for our furlough, and, and we were visiting with a couple in Aurora, Colorado. And... Uh, the, the, we were visiting with them, and they said, when did that happen, and what day? And I remembered what day. It was tax day, April 15th. <laughs> what time of day? Well, you know where I'm going. It was like 3.15 in the afternoon, but it was 7.15 in the morning in Aurora. And at 7.15 in the morning, that couple were holding our picture. It had all four of us, our two kids on there. And they were praying for us by name while we were being hijacked. Oh, wow. I truly believe it was the prayers of God's people that yes. spared our lives that day. Yes. So we encourage you to pray. Whenever God speaks to your heart. Slide, please. Vicki and I have uh, been missionaries a long time, but we work with a program called the Africa Oasis Project. It's the Assemblies of God World Missions Africa uh, Ministry of Using Water for Evangelism. I can tell you very simply, it's uh, providing fresh water and the living water of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. That is our purpose, and we use water for for a tool for evangelism. Yeah. Slide, please. We have been living in Togo. Uh, the pastor has alluded to earlier. It's a, a little tiny country that uh, you can see it circled there. It's I always tell people it's kind of in the armpit of Africa. Uh, and, and sort of that way, it's, it's hot and humid. and uh, But the people are beautiful. The need is great. And so we're honored to serve in that place. And we've worked now all over the continent of Africa. And it is exciting to see how God could use water to tell people about the living water of Jesus Christ. Slide, please. Let me tell you a story. The question was asked, why have you become a wife? Why have you become a wife? Now, that question was being asked by the men in a village called Waria. Waria is a, is a village right on the border of Benin and Nigeria. It's right there. There's a, there's a lane that goes across. There's no border crossing. There's no big fences. It's just a little lane that goes back and forth. And this Pastor Samson Solma uh, is the pastor of the of local Assemblies of God Church in the village there. And because of this lane that has uh, no border crossing or anything, uh, bandits, slide please, bandits go back and forth across there with black market gas and guns and drugs and, yes, slaves. Uh, it is very common. And these bandits that come back and forth are not good guys. Well, the women of Waria have to walk several kilometers, four or five kilometers, to get to some water that's filthy, <laughs> dirty, disgusting, disease-filled water, but it's all they have. 
But because the women walk along that lane, it's very dangerous for them because these bandits will, will, will harass them. Women have been raped. Women have been murdered. And because of the dangerous situation, the pastor, her husband, was carrying the water for his wife because he loved her. And the men of the village were harassing him, saying, why have you become a wife? Slide, please. The need for clean water is overwhelming. All across the continent of Africa, all across the world, 80% of all sickness in the world today, according to USA, 80% of all sickness is caused by unsafe and unclean water. Today and every day, 25,000 people will die across the world because of unsafe or unclean water. And of those 25,000 who will die, 90% of them are under the age of 5 years old. Children are dying around the world because of unsafe and unclean water, diarrheal diseases, and everything you can think of. Uh, people are walking great distances to get water. Slide, please. They carry the water on their head. From the time they're old enough to walk, they're starting to carry little pans and things. You know, we, we're so blessed. We go and we just get our drink of water out of the tap or a bottle of water or whatever it may be. And I'm not here to make you feel guilty. Just be blessed. Know that we are blessed to have water. We wash our cars. We wash our dogs. We wash. You know, I understand that. I have no problem. Just remember, most of the world doesn't have that access to clean, safe drinking water. Uh, it's just amazing to see what, uh, what a blessing water can be. And slide, please. So what do we do as missionaries? We work through the national church, the local church, uh, in each country that we work in. The leadership, we have them tell us where they need the water wells, such as where they're planting a church, or if they have a church that maybe has no water, no available clean drinking water. So they tell us, and we hire uh, local drilling rigs, and as you can see in the picture, and we are the, there, they will come, they will drill, we will use it for evangelism, we'll hold crusades, we'll do children's ministry, we'll distribute light for the lost Bibles and, and literature. We Even the women of Kansas came, and the ladies did a women's tea out in a village in Togo. It was the, the lady in the village had no clue what was going on, but they loved every minute of it because these ladies from Kansas were just showing them the love of Jesus. It's funny that the, they, they just had these wooden benches to sit on that they make. and So they had all the ladies sit on the floor and they had the wooden benches in front of them and they had put out placemats and they had them little umbrellas and it was, it was flowers. It was so much fun. The women in the village there had no clue what was going on, but they knew that these ladies from Kansas loved them, and they told them about Jesus and gave them Bibles and all kinds of things. So we use it for ministry. Slide, please. And also, one of our greatest and biggest friends is BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. It is awesome to see what BGMC is doing. You see my wife passing out what we call Buddy Bucket. We pass them out by the thousands at the well sites. And we have spent, I don't know how many days and hours, my wife and I in our home, putting those little stickers on Buddy's face on those buckets. And we pass them out. It's like giving the ladies a, a $100 bill. They're so excited to get these buckets. Again, showing them the love of Jesus and, and sharing the message of Jesus Christ with them. And so Vicki is in that particular village. By the way, that's Chito, Pastor, where we took you. We went back and we were distributing the buckets the Buddy Buckets, and uh, that was an interesting day. Uh, we, we found out, uh, we learned a great lesson that day. All these different villages have what they call market day. One, some day of the week, the different villages on different days, and the women from all over will come and bring their goods and their vegetables and their whatever they've got, and a lot of bartering and trading going on in every village on a different day. Well, we brought all our buckets in, and we were going to distribute them to the mamas in the church. Mamas. Uh, ladies in the church. And so we had all these stacked up and, you know, buddy buckets. And so we're out there, we're taking them one at a time off the stack and giving them to the ladies of the church, you know. But we didn't realize it was market day. And about a block down the street, although it's just that distance down the street, they were having their, their market. And, and, and women heard about these crazy white folks up there passing out buckets. <laughs> so here they came. They came just 
running like crazy, hundred or more, and, and they're just rushing. And me, being a missionary, I'm standing over here on a rock shooting some videotape, you know, just taking some pictures and this and that. And you know how those buckets, when you stack them deep enough, they begin to sort of stick. They don't come off real easy. And so my wife is, bless her heart, fighting, trying to get those buckets off that stack. And these women just come at her, and they're just going all over, and she's yelling in English, you know, stop, stop. And they're trying, and the women, they scratched her, they're all, and finally it dawned on me, duh, what's going on, so I, I work my way down in, I'm kind of a tall guy in that crowd, so I work my way down in there, and push my way through the women, grab my wife, and we yell, leave the buckets, and, and got her out of there, and you know, a little rattled, but then some men of the church, some young men that were tall, they, they worked in there, and grabbed what buckets were left, held them over their head, and walked out of there. The ladies were not happy. But we put them in the pastor's house and said, okay, when things calm down, you can pass them out to the ladies in the church. So we learned a lesson, don't distribute buckets on market day. <laughs> but God's protection was, was with us that day. Slide, please. But the point is, it brought such grace. The people are so excited when they see that happening. Now, the need is huge. I mean, the need is huge. Clean water, uh, when we put in a well, clean water comes close. It comes convenient. Uh, the places where they were covered with rashes, the rashes go away. Where they had yellow fever, which is carried by the mosquitoes at the stagnant water, it goes away. The, the, the disease goes away. The cholera goes away because of clean water. And personal hygiene is available now because of water. My dear, I told the Sunday school class, my mama... My mother uh, uh, lives now, she's 91, in a nursing home in Hayes. And, and she used to tell me when I was a little boy, there's no excuse to be dirty. Anybody can afford, a, uh, afford a, bar, a bar of soap. And I came back from Africa and had to explain to her mom, it's not the soap, it's the water. <laughs> when you walk a long ways to get just a little pan of water, you don't waste it, you know, taking a bath or whatever. So uh, the hygiene increases. And it's an amazing thing to watch how God works through these, these wells. The Bible is full of ministry at the well. Slide, please. I always say that water is a great equalizer because everybody needs water. I don't care if you're Christian or, or Islamic or, or if you're voodoo or animism or agnostic or whatever. Everybody has to have water. I, I'm telling you, it brings the people to the water. Uh, I've been, Vicki and I have been in, in Sierra Leone and Senegal and many other places where you would see a pump that is locked down. Nobody could access that water. Why? Because it's sitting next to a mosque. And if you want access to that water, you must join the mosque. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, our water, the, the wells we put are open to everyone. And Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. It's open to all, all who are welcome. Yeah. All who are welcome to come. Yes. It's exciting to see what God is doing. Now, let me, don't, don't let me get a misleading there. God has not asked us to hate the Muslim people. God has asked us to pray for and love the Muslim people. Yes. I hate terrorism and, and, and that kind and barbarianism, things of that nature. But we must love the Muslim people and pray for them. I'll tell you why. There's uh, Muslims coming to Christ now more than ever before. In uh, an Upper East Ghana, there's a village called Basayundi. In Basayundi, the pastor there is Pastor Timothy, who's a good friend of ours. He came to the Bible school, and we became good friends with Pastor Timothy, so we went to his village. And the Oasis Project put in a well right between his house, right there by his house in the church. And he told us a story. He said that... Uh, when the well was put in, people, of course, everybody heard about the new well, you know. And so a Muslim man from several kilometers away, lived in a village several kilometers away, he walked to come and see the water, to come to see the well. Pastor Timothy met him and said, you're welcome, come, take all the water you want. And while he was receiving the, the, the fresh water, Pastor Timothy also began to tell him about the living water of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And the Muslim man accepted Christ as his Savior right there at the well. Pastor Timothy wanted to baptize him. Well, this is a very arid area. There's no ponds or streams place to, to baptize him. So what he did, he just pumped a whole bunch of water and made a mud puddle around the well. And he just rolled him in the mud. And I believe God recognized that baptism absolutely as much as it went dunk him in a tank. 
God has a plan, and God recognized. And the interesting thing was, the next three Sundays in a row, that Muslim man came back to the church for three Sundays in a row, brought a different wife with him each time, and all three wives got saved and baptized in mud. <laughs> we are. They're lined up for what God is doing. Yes. You know, we let Pastor Timothy and God deal with the multiple wives. There's, I think there's a scripture, no man shall serve to... No, that's something else. I'm sorry. I just threw that in. <laughs> You know, we are so truly, truly blessed to be able to serve God in such a way that it brings the kingdom of God to people everywhere. You and I, we are working together. God has called us to the same purpose, to bring the message of Jesus Christ to those who hear, need to hear that message so much. It's an amazing thing to see what God is doing. Yes. I want to finish that story. Slide, please. Pastor Samson Solma, there was... Carrying the water for his wife, I can tell you now, by God's grace, we had the opportunity to put a well. And in there, the church and his house, no longer are the women walking that dangerous road. No longer are the people of the community going so far to get water. But now there's fresh, flowing, clean water right there. And they walk just a short distance to the well. Fresh water and the living water are, are, are flowing in Waria today. I can tell you, if you forget everything else I say, remember this one thing. Fresh water changes their today. Yes. But the living water changes yes. their eternity. Amen. That's what makes that's what it's about. There, there are many, many uh, nonprofit organizations drilling wells in Africa. Not near enough. I mean, we're not even scratching the surface. But there's many of them that are helping and bless them. We're not territorial. Go for it. Drill wells. What makes us, I think, a bit unique is when we say that we are bringing in the living water as well. Mm -hmm. Slide, please. You won't, uh, we pray that you will continue to lift us up in prayer. Continue to, to be, have a heart for missions and see what God is doing. Yes. You know, there's, a, there's a, a scripture. Well, there's a village uh, by the name of Kajali. In Kajali, they were desperate for water. Desperate for water. They would walk several kilometers to get to a well. Not a, just a, a big hand-dug hole where they would... They had some boards, some pieces of wood down there. And the women would climb down in and they would have to dip the water. You'll see a picture of it here in a little bit. They dip the water with a gourd and put it in a bucket. Then they'd take that bucket and hand it up to a lady who would then take the bucket and hand it up to another lady. And then they would put it in a pan and then they would carry it a long ways. Well, the Togolese Assembly of God sent a young family there to pioneer a brand new church. Plant a brand new church. Slide, please. And uh, let's see. There's, yeah, there's the ladies climbing down in the hole to get the water. And when they began to plant this church, it was a Muslim community. It was a quite arid area. And so when they began to plant this church, they faced a lot of persecution from the community, from the village there. In fact, they would tear down their church. It was just a simple church made with some little wooden poles holding up a grass roof. And, but they would tear it down and harass the people. And, and even they wouldn't even let the people of the church go to this hole in the ground. They would have to go much further to another area because they were not welcome. Well, the Togolese Assembly of God allowed us, the Africa Oasis Project, to drill a well in Kajali. And in Kajali, we hit a great well. The water began to flow. The, 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 the hole in the ground, they didn't have to go there anymore because there was plentiful, clean, fresh water. And the chief made a mandate to all the village. He said, you will not bother the people of the church anymore because they brought us fresh water. And if we harass them, they will take the water away, <laughs> which, of course, we would never, ever do. But we were so glad it opened the doors, and, and, and it was exciting because the church began to grow. Their simple little building made out of reeds and, and some wood turned into where they are now built. They built their own cement block building. It was funny. They built it right around their little building. And, and so when they got the new building built, then they go in and tear the little building down. God is blessing in Kajali. I, and and uh, the, I asked the pastor... Can we go see the hole just before we left? I said, can we see the hole in the ground where they used to get water? He said, actually, we can't. He said, 
the, the bush is growing all over the trail. You can't find the trail there anymore. They don't have to go to the old water because now they have the fresh water. Yeah. I said, what happened to the people that were persecuting the church? Now, I wish I could tell you they all got saved and they were part of the church. But what he said was, they've left. The people who were persecuting left the community and now they are wide open to minister in that church and they have a permanent building, they have permanent water, and they have such a blessing growing. Now, isn't it interesting? In our lives, when we leave the place where the old dirty water was flowing into our life, when you come through the experience of Jesus Christ and your fresh and living water begins to flow through your life, I got a feeling there's quite a few, maybe some of you in this congregation and all of us can tell a testimony of where I was going the wrong place to get water. I was doing the wrong things. I was living the wrong life. But it was all the water I thought I needed. But it was killing them. It was dirty, filthy water. But now I don't have to go there anymore. I've got the living water of Jesus Christ. Isn't it amazing how the bush... Just covered that path over. I'm not tempted by what I used to be tempted by. I'm not impacted by the old clan. I'm not, I'm not bothered by the things of this earth that began to that bothered me in the past. Now that I'm drinking the fresh water, the living water of Jesus Christ, I know that that's where my source is, and I don't have to look where I came right. from. I can look where I'm going. And I thank God for that. I thought, what a great idea. You know, it's an amazing thing that we have. There's people that have no water at all. It, I, we, you've heard of that, that, that place that some think is a myth called Timbuktu, from here to Timbuktu. It's a real place. It's in Mali. I've had the opportunity to go there twice. We've put two wells, one right in Timbuktu and one about 20 kilometers outside of Timbuktu. And the people that live there are Tuareg, what they call the Tuareg people. You've seen their pictures in National Geographic or somewhere. The men wear the long robes. They're usually blue or dark. And, and even the men cover their faces. Their turban comes down and covers their face. You just see their dark eyes showing, you know. And, and they're, they're on camel. They're nomads. They live out in the desert. They spend their life looking for water for their camels, their goats, their families. Sometimes in that order. Uh, but they, they're always looking for water. Well, we had the opportunity to drill. And when, when we, we hired a Muslim driller, uh, not that there's a lot of options out there, but we, and we drilled a deep water well. And the Tuareg were up on the, up on the sand dune looking down at all the activity going on. And when they finally got deep enough, they did hit water, plentiful water. And when the water began to flow, it was amazing. The Tuareg just took down their tents and their, their, their what they call an encampment, encampment, and just drifted right down to the water so that they could have water. It was amazing how that fresh water drew them into what I would say a place where they could receive the living water. You know, we have an Assembly of God church in Timbuktu. It is exciting to see what God is doing because they, and sometimes there's people in our world today that have, have no, 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 no spiritual water, no living water in their life. I mean, you talk about a dark continent, watch the news, what's going on in America. I mean, why are we, why are people so afraid of a Ten Commandments? Why are they so afraid of something that, that has living water to it? My father and mother pastored a little town called Riverton, Nebraska. Not the one in Kansas. A little town, 152 people, it says on the sign. And mom and dad was pastor. And one day, he needed to carry something in the church. And there was a guy he knew, just a man in the church. And, and dad asked him, hey, Bob, or whatever. He said, will you help me carry this in the church? Sure, Reverend, I'll help you. Because he knew, knew who dad was. We'd never been in church. But, so they carried the things in, come down the front here, set it down. And old Bob, looked, he looked up at the front of the church, and he says, What's the T for? <laughs> I said, I'm talking Nebraska here. Had no clue what the cross was, the cross of Jesus Christ. To him it was a T. There are people that are drinking the wrong water. They have no spiritual input in their life whatsoever. And then there's those who are drinking the wrong water that are listening to the latest pop star, the latest celebrity, or the latest guru, or the, the latest whatever. Oh, they got plenty of water. 
I mean, this, this spiritual thing or this new age thing, I'm showing my age. We don't even say new age anymore, do we? Anyway, whatever it is, they're, they're drinking all this stuff, but it's a wrong water. It'll kill them. It's right. not the living water. Right. Yeah. I don't care what they say on Facebook or what they say on the latest website that tells you, well, I mean, let's face it, look at us. We're all overweight, underweight, too tall, too short, too fat, too thin. We're all either wearing the wrong clothes, drinking the wrong thing, driving the wrong car. I mean, the media constantly tells us how bad off we are. And we just need to use their product or read this book or, 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 or wear these clothes or smoke this. And it'll just make you wonderful. Well, a lot of people believe that and they drink that water. It's not clean water. All we need is the Word of God. We need to accept Christ as our Savior. That's the clean and fresh water. I don't know. You know, marriage, oh, we don't need to worry too much about marriage. Just, you know, casual sex, anything you want. It's okay. Everybody's doing it. I'm telling you, it will kill you spiritually to drink yes. that water. Right. And then there's people, praise God, that have fresh water, have the living water. Those of you here this morning that... Read the Word of God, and we know that this water will rejuvenate, it will cleanse, it will make you pure, make you forgiven, praise God. Like I said, this water is the great equalizer. It doesn't care where you've come from, they're ready to receive you. You don't clean up to go take a bath. Have you ever heard that? People say, well, you need to get your life right and come to church. No! Come to church. Let God help you get your life right. right. Heard a pastor say, we evaluate the success of our church by how many cigarette butts we have out in front of the church on Sunday morning. <laughs> I thought that's an interesting way to do it, but who do you want to come to church? Just our fellowship, just us. No, we need to reach into our community as well. God has a plan to share, and you and I are a part of it, to share the fresh water and the living water. I want to close with a song that talks about the story Jesus uh, uh, spoke to the woman at the well. And he said, you can drink this water, but you'll thirst again. He says, but if you'll drink the living water, you'll never thirst again. And this song that you're going to hear, you'll hear it start, the ladies are, a bunch of ladies that are, uh, are praying and are singing out in a village. And I just happened to have my camera running and catch the audio. You hear them singing unto the Lord. And, and, uh, what they're saying is, when you hear it at the very beginning, you'll hear them saying in the, in the Eve language, Believers, take heart, even when the battle is hard. Press on because you are a winner all the time. This song is called, You'll Never Thirst Again. Disappoint 
wanted, you'll find what you are longing for. Drink from this water, drink from this water, and you'll never, you'll never thirst again. Oh, drink from this water. Thank you.